A very good morning to all of you Calculus fans on this chilly December 9th, early, early in the morning. Welcome to the ninth episode of our AP Calculus Free Response Question Advent Calendar. Let's find the ninth chocolate in the Lint Teddy Chocolate Advent Calendar. I actually just spotted it. It's here in the corner. And then we'll do a little bit of calculus. Let me zoom into this for you here in the top left. It's right on the uh, right on the rooftop. That's where like Santa and the reindeer go, right? Stomping around looking for the chimney. There's the chimney. It's, it's over on the other side. Let's get into this square. And I will put today's free response question on screen for you to take a look at. We are... Um, sketching a slope field today. That'll be pretty fun. I think it's a pretty quick and easy question we have. Uh, the chocolate, this, this compartment's being a little stubborn though. Oh man, that will probably be more of a challenge than the question. Now I will extract the chocolate and I will consume this very rapidly so we can get into what really matters, which is not chocolate, not holiday treats. Well, really calculus is a holiday treat. So, you know, it kind of is. That is what's important. That's very soft. I wonder if my bright lighting equipment is melting these chocolates. Man, that's super good. Love that. All right, let's do some math. This is problem five from the 2006 AP Calc AB exam. Consider the differential equation dy dx equals 1 plus y over x, where x is non-zero. Part A says, on the axes provided, sketch a slope field for the given differential equation at the eight points indicated. So when you sketch a slope field, of course, you've got to decide how many slopes should you draw and where should you draw them. This is telling us how many to draw and where to draw them at these eight points. So we'll just have to use the differential equation to find the slopes at those points and sketch little tangent lines representing those slopes. So let's get into it. This should be pretty quick because there's only two parts to this problem. It might help to organize our information in a table for part A. So we can put the coordinates on the left side and we can put their corresponding derivatives on the right side. I've split this up into two tables just so that the table's not super long and I have to scroll way down the page to fill it out. So it's just space reasons. All right, we'll start with the first four points in this table. Those are negative two, zero. So I'll put that here, negative two, zero. We've got negative one, zero. We have negative one, one. And we have this point here, negative one, negative one. We'll have to plug these points into the derivative given the differential equation in order to find the slopes at these points. Plugging in negative two zero gives us a one in the numerator because we'd have one plus that y coordinate of zero divided by that x coordinate of negative two. So the slope here should be negative one half. Plugging in the point negative one zero should give us one plus zero in the numerator, so one, divided by that x coordinate of negative one. So in total, the slope would be negative one. Plugging in the third point, negative one, one, we should have one plus one, or two, in the numerator, divided by negative one in the denominator, for a total of negative two being the slope. Last point, negative one, negative one, we should have one plus negative one in the numerator, which is zero, divided by negative one in the denominator, but it ends up just being zero. We will sketch little tangent lines to represent those slopes, but first let's finish calculating the slopes for the other four points, which we'll do in this table. All right, so we've got this point, which is one, zero. We've got this point, which is two, zero. We've got this point, which is one, one. And we have this point here, which is one, negative one. And we'll plug these in and find the slopes just as we did for the previous four points. If we plug in one, zero, the numerator will be one and the denominator will be one also. So the slope will be one. If we plug in two, zero, we'll have one in the numerator and two in the denominator. So that will be a slope of one half. If we plug in one, one, the numerator will be two and the denominator will be one. So the slope will be two. 
If we plug in one, negative one, the numerator will be zero and the denominator will be one, so the slope will be zero. All right, let's go ahead and plot tangent lines representing these slopes at the appropriate points. Note, if you were actually doing this on the exam for real, you would have been asked to use the axes provided in the pink exam booklet, but we're gonna do it right here. And remember, these things don't have to be exact, right? Negative half, I don't have to draw a slope of exactly negative half there. I'm doing this by hand, that's not really possible. But I do need to get the big details right. So I need it to be going down because it's negative, and I would need it to be less steep than the slope of negative one, which should be less steep than the slope of negative two. Gotta get those big relative details right. But let's start with a real simple one, the slope of zero at the point negative one, negative one. At this point here, negative one, negative one, we should have a horizontal tangent. So I'll just draw a little segment. You can see it there representing the slope at that point. Then going back to the top of the table, at the point negative two, zero, we should have a slope of negative half. Here is negative two, zero. A slope of negative half should be a slight downward slope. So maybe something like that. Then at negative one, zero, we should have a slope of negative one. So it should be downwards and it should be steeper than that slope of negative half. And again, this is at negative one, zero. So maybe that looks something like that. Then at the point negative one, one, we should have a slope of negative two. So right here, we should again have a downward slope and it should be the steepest yet. So maybe it looks something like that. Now, if we had arranged this data more intelligently, let's say we swap rows one and two, we could easily see that the remaining points and their corresponding slopes are just the opposites of everything we just did. These are the same slopes that we have left to sketch that we just did, except opposite. Instead of negative, it's positive. Instead of negative, it's positive. Instead of negative, it's positive. You see that. After noticing that, I can very quickly finish this slope field by just drawing a mirror image of everything we just did. So I'll try to do that quickly. Eh, maybe it looks something like this. And there is our slope field. Remember, you just gotta get those big details right. Like this slope of positive one is going upwards and it's less steep than this slope of positive two, which is going upwards. Let's move on then to part B. We are asked to find the particular solution, y equals f of x, to the differential equation with the initial condition f of negative one equals one, and to state its domain. The differential equation in question here, of course, is this one that we were originally given. So we can find a particular solution using this differential equation and this initial condition, and we can do it using the separation of variables technique. So I've written the differential equation and the given initial condition. Let's multiply both sides of the differential equation by dx to get the x's together, and divide both sides by one plus y to get the y's together. If we do that, on the left, we're going to have one over one plus y, dy, and on the right, we're going to have one over x, dx. After separating the variables, the next step is to integrate. We integrate both sides. On the left, integrating one over one plus y, that's just the natural log of one plus y. Remember, the absolute value is necessary here in the event that y might be negative. If we knew for sure y would never be negative, we would not have to bother with those absolute values, but in this case, we do. Over here on the right side, similar situation, the integral of one over x is the natural log of the absolute value of x. In theory, there is an arbitrary constant on the left and the right, but let's just say we gathered them both together on the right side and called that c. Now remember, we're trying to get y by itself because we want y equals f of x. We want some actual function that is a particular solution to the differential equation, given this initial condition. So to get this y by itself, or to take one more step towards that goal, we will exponentiate both sides of this equation. That's going to give us e to the ln absolute value of one plus y on the left side equals e to the ln absolute value of x plus c on the right. 
but by our exponent laws, that's the same as e to the ln absolute value of x times e to the c, right? Because we could bring these together by just adding the exponents, but e to a constant is just a constant. So let's just agree to call that constant c and move it to the front. Order of multiplication doesn't matter. We just prefer to write it this way. Finally, the e's and the ln's cancel out. That was the whole point. And so now we have the absolute value of one plus y on the left equals this constant c multiplied by the absolute value of x. Now we can clean this up some, because remember, we're looking for a function, y equals f of x, that is a solution to our differential equation with this initial condition. So we know it can't be the case that one plus y can take on multiple values. Sure, 0.5 and negative 0.5 have the same absolute value, but if that was allowable, then we would not have a function because that would mean you could plug in an X and I could give you a couple valid options for Y to make this equation true because of the absolute value. So does one plus Y take on negatives or positives? Cause it can't possibly take on both. Well, from the particular solution, we know that it must take on positive values because we have a positive y. We know that for a fact. So this absolute value of one plus y must only take on positive values. And thus the absolute value can be dropped because it will not change the positive input. So we have that one plus y equals c times the absolute value of x. Then we can plug in our initial condition in order to solve for the constant c. The initial condition gave an x coordinate of negative one. So we have c times the absolute value of negative one and the corresponding y coordinate was positive one. So we have one plus one on the left. The absolute value of negative one just goes away since it's one and we find that c equals two. Then we can rewrite our equation with this information. We have that one plus y equals two multiplied by the absolute value of x. All right, now what about the domain? Well, let's make the one more step of getting y by itself. So y equals two times the absolute value of x minus one, just moving that one over. And now we can figure out the domain by consulting our initial condition. The initial condition said that we have a negative x value in the domain. And looking at the slope field and the differential equation, we know that x can't equal zero. So our function either lies on this side of the slope field or this side. And since we know we have a negative x value, it must be on the left side. And so, so the domain is x is less than zero. And since x is negative, we know exactly what the absolute value is going to do. It's going to apply an additional negative to make the x positive. So we could also write the function like this, y equals negative 2x minus one, where again, the domain is that X is less than zero as suggested by the initial condition. And that completes our solution to free response question five from the 2006 AP Calc AB exam. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and if you're enjoying the AP Calculus free response question advent calendar, be sure to share it around and tune in tomorrow for the next episode. Thanks for watching.